Hey guys, Eric here at McKenna. Today we're going to calibrate our monitor. So I'm going to walk you through what a calibration setup looks like. We're going to be using our Calibrite color checker display. And then after we get that calibrated, we're going to use our Fujifilm test print and fine tune some things. So let's get into it. Okay, so take note of the color temperature and the gray that you see on the background of the desktop. We're going to reset this into factory default settings. You see how that gray changed there? So all of our settings that we had before are completely changed. Let's go back into our monitor settings. You have four buttons on the back and you have the up and down arrows and the check to select. Let's select English and this, these settings will increase your power consumption okay. And let's get into color adjust. Now, let's just double check our contrast and brightness. We're not gonna change our contrast unless we need to. It defaults to 70, brightness defaults to 75. This is from factory. Now, this is a ViewSonic monitor and every monitor has their own menu. Okay, so color temperature. We're gonna, it defaults to native. We're going to change it to user color. Now this is really important because when you calibrate, your calibrator suggests to increase red, blue, and green or decrease one of those. And you see how the color changed. So let's just double check and see where we're at. Okay, so red defaults to 100. Hit the back button right there. Go down into green, hit the check. Let's check green, green is at 100. Okay, hit the back button, and now we get into blue. Let's see what blue is at. Hit the check. Get in there, okay. And blue is at 100. Let's back up. Now we hit that twice, and get into color space. Now if you wanna get back in there, you hit the check, otherwise you hit the down arrow. Now hit the check. Into color space, it defaults to auto. Let's change it to RGB. Now hit the check and hit the back button in color range. Get out of auto and put that into full range. Okay, back, back, back. And now we're ready to open our CC Studio for our Calibrite color checker display. This is our device. It plugs in via USB. So you'll pop open the top there, spin it around so it fits on the back. Now the lens is exposed and that lens will fit nice and flush against that monitor. Now we have an adjustable counterweight here so you can adjust that length as you see fit. You'll incline the monitor and this will fit nice and flush. We'll put it in the center, but for right now, we're just gonna set it off to the side. And just to double check, yes, the correct one is selected, there it is. And then we select display, because we are calibrating a display, okay? We can leave it into photo. If we're calibrating for video, we do it here. If we want to change the custom into custom, we can do it here, okay? So when you hover over these things, it talks about, this is luminance, this is candles. You can set it if you're in a lower ambient light condition, try lowering the luminance to 80. I used to have mine at 100, let's say and that would be your target. So when you adjust your brightness, if you set your target to 100, then you would adjust your brightness on your screen to 100. Okay, now D65 is the closest to noon daylight balanced, and this says it right here. So D55, 75, all those things you can change in the gamut 2.2, and then you can read about this as well. Okay, we're just going to leave it into photo. All right, now I have two monitors here. This one, which is selected, if we select this one, this will put it on this screen. I had it at full screen, but once you select this, it will change it to this size. Now, if I were to select this one, I'm going to select it. It's going to go to my other monitor, okay? Now I bring it back and you see that that one's selected. Now let's select this one. It stays on this screen. Now we know that this is the monitor that we are calibrating. All right, hit next. Now start measurement process. Click this, okay, and we're going to place this in the center. For best results, be sure the measurement device is resting on the display. Okay, and that's why we have this counterweight here, and this will go nicely in the center here. 
right? And it's nice and flush. Okay, we don't need to see that again. Okay, and then here are the controls. Contrast, RGB controls, and brightness. If you don't want to adjust these, you can uncheck those, but say we want to do those. Now, we aren't going to do contrast because this measurement device as it is in this software does not do contrast. Okay, now the white point target is 6502 Kelvin, okay? Right, we set it to D65, right? Now, and then currently we're at 5928, 5933 Kelvin. It's going in between 28 and 33, 59, 28, 59, 33. Okay, so we'll get into our monitor controls. We see that our red and green looks good, but our blue needs to come up. And remember that our blue is at 100, so that can't come up, so we'll have to adjust the other ones. Okay, user color, come in here. Let's get into red. Let's decrease this, maybe 10 or 11 points, let's say, okay. Now green, let's do this. Let's say nine points. Now blue, let's decrease this. Oh, we were close. 64.98 at, and I have blue at 97. Blue at 98 goes a little further, 59, 50, 65, 94, or 65, 04. That looks really good. So I'm at 97 on blue. So we get all three greens in all three channels. Our target was 6502 Kelvin. We're at 6504. Looks perfect. Okay, now we're going to do a brightness measurement. So our target is 120 and our measured white luminance is 129. So let's get into our brightness. Okay, and remember we were at 75 by factory default. So let's bring this down, let's say, I don't know, into the 50s maybe. 121, close, and 120. Okay, so I'm at 55 brightness. So let's just write those numbers down. I believe it was 89, 91, 97 for red, green, blue. Contrast was 70 and brightness was 55. Okay, a couple things. Remember that we changed the red, green, and blue on the monitor itself. Now, some monitors don't have those capabilities, so you wanna make sure if you're buying a new monitor or in the market for a new monitor, you wanna make sure that that monitor has red, green, and blue controls. Okay, now that they do, then you're able to change the red, green, and blue according to the calibrator. The second thing is that there are also monitors that don't use these external calibrators. They have hardware built into the monitor. They have software that runs their hardware and that hardware comes with the monitor and those monitors auto calibrate. Another thing, here's an analogy kind of like driving a car. The more miles you put on the car, the more often you're going to have to change the oil right same with calibration the more hours you log on your monitor the more often you're going to have to calibrate so some people do it weekly bi-weekly monthly it really depends how many hours you log on that monitor measurement completed you may remove the device from your screen click next to proceed okay in this step what I like to do is rename the ICC profile so that when I go into my system into display settings and color profile I can see the ICC profile of the date as in today and I either say it's right or left as in my right or left monitor now this is good because I'll know which color profile is being loaded and if it's the most recent date then I know it's the correct color profile let's say two weeks and save profile. Okay, this says it's been saved correctly. This will also say that there will be an application that runs in the background to allow for notifications to come up and remind you that it needs to be calibrated based on your two week reminder. Okay, now you can see the before and after and you can also change to a different picture. Okay, so ever so slightly look pretty good from factory just a little change you can it's very subtle you can kind of see it in the reds in the face and there it is just a little less red a little more true to to tone okay now if we like the after let's just hit home and then we're good 
and close the program. To double check to make sure that color profile is the one being loaded, come into your system and then to display, select the correct monitor. We did the right one. On a Mac, it's system preferences and then display. Scroll down to color profile come over here to the right and you can see that's the exact name that we gave it and that's the one being loaded. Okay, so the final step after calibrating is just fine tuning to McKenna. Okay, now we have a five by seven Fujifilm test print and a daylight balanced print viewer behind my monitor. Okay, and this monitor has the same image on it. Now if you order the free calibration test prints, you can do up to 10 free eight by 10 luster prints and you can pull your image up on your your screen and then have the print from us in the daylight balanced print viewer behind the monitor and you can compare the two. So if you need to make any fine tuning after calibration, you can go into those monitor controls and change maybe a point of green, point of blue, point of red, and then fine tune that already calibrated monitor to us. Okay. One last thing before we conclude our calibration video and that is just a quick mention about working on a laptop. If you are working on a laptop, we recommend that you use an external monitor so that you're able to adjust all the settings that you saw in this video. Remember, each monitor is going to have a different menu inside that monitor and each calibrator will have different software. So it's not going to be identical to what you saw, but if you have any questions or any issues come up, please reach out to us Monday through Friday, eight to five. We're here for you. Happy calibrating, happy shooting, and we'll see you soon.